Good afternoon. My name is Crystal Joyner. I'm a registered dietitian with The Giant Company. And today we are continuing our produce spotlight series by featuring watermelon and jicama with a watermelon and jicama salsa. So I will go over our ingredients and we can chat through um, how we're going to prepare it today. So we have a small um, seedless watermelon. So just like a personal watermelon, it's going to be really cool today because we're going to have less dishes. We are going to cut this in half and make it um, the bowl for our salsa. We have jicama, of course. If you have been around for a little bit, you may have made some jicama recipes with me um, last year, uh, but I did make some other salsas with jicama um, that had blueberries and strawberries. I think it was around 4th of July, but um, overall it has a very, um, let's say neutral taste um, and you can pair it, you can pair it with a lot of things because the flavor is not really gonna be something that um, I guess add, it doesn't add a whole lot, but it does have a good amount of fiber. So we are happy to have jicama in our salad today. We also have some diced red onions. Y'all know how much we love convenience, so I went ahead and just got the ones that were already cut because I have a lot of things to cut here today. This jicama is crunchy. You are correct. We have jalapeno, some lime juice, chili powder, a little bit of cumin, some cilantro, and mint. So we've got a little bit of different, um, actually lots of flavors here. So we'll have some spice, we'll have some sweetness, we'll have a little bit of savory. Um, so this is gonna be a good combination. And then what I got to serve the um, salsa with is just some of our um, chips. So we can go ahead and get started. I've got all of our ingredients out. Make sure we're good to go. Yes. So what we're going to do to start, I'm just going to rinse off my um, personal little watermelon here. Okay, so I gave it a good little rinse. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to get out another cutting board. I will pan my camera down so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to get a, a second cutting board. Okay, so we have our second cutting board. We've got our watermelon. And what we wanna do on the bottom is just carefully trim a very thin slice because we want the watermelon to be able to sit flat. So just maybe kind of look at your sides and see which one you know, has the opportunity to be the most flat. I think that, I think it's probably this one. So I'm just gonna cut a thin slice off the bottom um, so that it can sit flat. So we'll start there. You can always cut more to try to make it balanced. I may not get it on the first try, that's okay. Okay, that looks like it might sit. Let's try this. Okay, so our watermelon is sitting. So perfect. That's all we did is just do a small trim. Um, and then we are going to um, half, half of it, half of it, can you talk? Half the watermelon. So we'll just half it now because we want to create that bowl. I'm just going to cut right through it. So we have our bowl here. And technically you could make two with this because we are only using half of the watermelon. Okay. So it's supposed to be seedless, but that's okay. We only have a few seeds here, um, but we've got basically our bowl. We have another half that we can set aside 
you can slice it up and have some watermelon, or if you wanted to make two uh, salsa bowls, you could definitely do that. So yeah, you want to, um, one, just check out the skin, make sure you know there's no damage. Um, some people um, knock on them, and if they sound hollow, um, that's how they know. Um, but you can also look at, I kind of cut, cut it off now. But if you look at the end of it, where it was taken off the vine, that helps to indicate ripeness. So we've got our bowl here. And what I'm going to do next, I'm going to get some of these seeds out. And then I'm going to scoop out my watermelon. And I'm going to put it in just a separate bowl. Because we want to keep the walls of the watermelon intact and the peel. So right now, we just got it right here. I've got a metal spoon. I'm going to, I'm just going to get a little, well, I'll use one of these to get some of my seeds out. There's not many, so I'm not too worried about it. That's something that's easily able to be picked out later. Okay. I think we'll be all right. So I'm going to take my big spoon and I'm going to scoop it into my bowl now. So remember, we want to keep the walls intact. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of juice everywhere. So maybe some paper towels, having it on that plate or cutting board will definitely help to prevent any extra mess. Because definitely watermelons, of course, are juicy. We know them being good for hydration for the summer, you can definitely see see the juice. So if you are looking for a hydrating fruit, um, definitely try some watermelon in the summer. All right, so I'm just gonna continue scooping out my watermelon. Just kind of make it even on each side so that we can have equal amount of salsa in our bowl. All right, so once you've got your um, watermelon scooped out, I'm gonna push, I'm gonna put my juice into my bowl over here. So we have our watermelon bowl. So Perfect. This is where our salsa is going to go. We have our watermelon inside here. We're going to set this aside um, and we are going to work on chopping our watermelon and also our jicama and our jalapeno. So I'm going to take this, set it over here. Thank goodness we've got our onions chopped already. So I'll just put those over there because that's more of the ready to go. I'm going to pull up an extra plate so that I can put my watermelon there while I cut my jicama and my jalapeno. So if you haven't um, been in a jicama class, so we have um, talked about how to peel them and what really that I find that it's easy to peel jicama is just a regular knife. So it could be a chef's knife, um, but it has a, a pretty waxy, um, surface. So using a knife, honestly, I feel like is best because it doesn't just slide off. You can actually, you know, get a good grip on it and cut. So that's how we'll do it. Pick a, a good starting point. So I think this sits nicely. Um, I, everything I've seen people use a knife just because the, the texture of it is a lot more waxy. Um, Okay, well, that was not a good example, but it's a lot more waxy. So, and it's thicker than a potato. Um, you could try. I think it really just depends on the jicama itself, but a lot of them are pretty waxy. So just using a knife like this is pretty easy. Like turnips, yes. That is correct. So we've got our jicama. We're going to be using about four ounces of jicama. So you can either weigh that out um, 
And so we were talking a little bit earlier about jicama being um, a really good source of fiber. See, now I can just peel it off. See, it's different than a potato. <laughs> you can peel it with your fingers if it's coming off, um, but we can just continue with our knife. So and we'll get this cut. I'm just going to peel about half of it, and then I'm going to cut it in half to use for our salad, for our, our salad, our salsa. <laughs> Okay, let me get the bottom. Wow. So we want to just look for um, that waxy kind of glossy exterior um, because you don't want it to be too dry. So just really looking at the, um, the outside of it, looking at the skin, make sure it's healthy. Um, no, you know, bruises or really uh, no bad spots on it. Um, but definitely just looking for that waxy skin. We want to have plenty of moisture in it. It does feel like a potato, but depending on um, the jicama you get, you can tell that it has maybe a little bit more moisture than potato. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this in half. Okay. And we're just going to dice this up. And we'll be using this for our salsa. And then next we'll cut our jalapenos and we use one full jalapeno. So we've got definitely a little sweet here. We've got the savory flavor. We've got it, um, the onions, which I saw someone earlier saying, onions and watermelon it's um it's actually a really good pairing because i feel like the you know while red onions can sometimes be maybe more of like a pungent taste we really have that sweetness of the watermelon to help um balance the flavor out so i'm just gonna work on dicing this up we'll get it smaller as we go Might pull my chopper out because that would probably be quicker. <laughs> All right. That's... I'm going to pull my chopper out, guys. Let's see what anybody's saying in the chat. Yeah, so they are there. Of course, they're at Giants where I got, I got mine. Um, they are um, more towards the end of the produce aisle. So near like the um, radishes and on down, oh yes, yes, the chopper, my saving grace. Okay, so we're gonna get this knocked out with our chopper. <laughs> All right. I don't have a sous chef today. Okay, so I'm just putting these through the chopper. Oh yeah, how the chopper works. Let's see, running out of counter space. So the chopper, oh my gosh, it's great. You just, you can cut little pieces, just making sure they fit in that square, put it down and it's chopped. <laughs> Some of my pieces are a little bit bigger, but I'm just going to kind of put them on there. I'm so glad that I just went ahead and bought the pre-cut onion. All right. Hopefully that's not too loud for y'all. No, too stuffy, no. All right, perfect. Just kind of try to put the rest of this in here so we can get everything else going. 
So of course, with you know any kind of recipe that has a lot of uh, prep or chopping, um, if you you know want to spend the time, definitely. Um, of course, it's it's cheaper to buy things that are not pre-chopped. So you know when I can, can I I do that. Um, but if we are running low on time, it is nice and totally fine to buy something that's pre-chopped. Okay. Put these last little pieces. Perfect. All right. So we've got our jicama. We are good to go there. Next, we have our jalapeno that we're going to chop. So we're going to do one jalapeno. I'm going to rinse this off really quickly. Okay. So we've got our jalapeno that we'll chop. I'm gonna take the seeds out. So I just go in there with my knife. Just, I'm gonna do it over my trash so that I don't have seeds flying everywhere. Okay. Got that done. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add this to my chopper because I know that they're all going to be mixed together. So work smarter, not harder. I'm going to, um, keeping up nice skills is a good thing. Yes, it is a good thing. Definitely. It definitely is. Y'all should have seen my knife skills yesterday trying to work on a mango video cutting up mangoes <laughs> if anyone if anyone have any um fun tips and tricks for cutting up mangoes i think getting around the pit is the trickiest part maybe knowing um the thin or the thick side for cutting mangoes we don't have any mangoes in our recipe today, but I just thought I'd I'd talk about my my experience. Yeah, they are slippery, so be careful there. I bought the chop the oh these jalapenos are hot. <laughs> my my throat is like I can feel it. Um, I bought the chopper off Amazon. Goodness, that was spicy. Okay, let me get a little towel. I know they they were very difficult to cut. You eat around the pit. Let's see, but I did find out the cool thing of how to um you know make the cubes. So it, it, after a couple of tries, it it was going smoothly. But I mean, it looks it looks very very pretty, of course. All right, so in our chopper, we've got our jalapeno, our jicama. We have our watermelon over here. So I'm just gonna try to cut some of our watermelon. We're just gonna try to chop it. it doesn't have to be very, um, you know, precise. Of course, the watermelon is a lot, a um, lot more water in it, so it has the possibility of getting a little mushy. So we don't really want to try to cut it up too much. Um, so I've cut some here. We just cut a little smaller. And we will add them together. We have our spices and our herbs that we have to add and also our onions. And we're gonna combine it all in a bowl and we will mix it and put it back in our watermelon bowl. Yeah, and if you, if you don't wanna add um, the jalapeno and the chili powder, feel free to definitely skip one because if you think that's gonna be too much spice, of course, it always depends on your jalapeno. And if your jalapeno is a really spicy one, it's going to be a lot of spice. So feel it out. If you wanted to start with um, about half of a jalapeno instead of a full, you know, there's definitely, um, definitely room for change there. All right. So 
I'll show you what I'm doing here. I'm just cutting up some of our watermelon. Like I said, there are some seeds in this. I'm gonna try to get them out as I am able. So if you can find a seedless option, I would recommend doing that, but it's okay. Not, not a big deal. So I'm just going to kind of finish chopping these. Smells very good. Very sweet. All right. So I'm just going to do a couple more pieces here. Trying to avoid the seeds. got our watermelon and this remember this was like the half one half of the inside of a uh, personal watermelon so we still have a whole nother half to do whatever we want with if we wanted to make two bowls of salsa we could do that or we could just serve the watermelon by itself This is the last of it. Finish it up. All right, so we got our watermelon. We are good to go there. Yes, say I've got a lot of watermelon juice here. All right, so we have our um, watermelon chopped, our jicama chopped, our jalapeno. We have our onions chopped already. So we'll use that. I'm going to set this over here, put it, maybe put it in another bowl. Okay, so what we're going to do next, we're going to combine everything together. So I will pan down to show you that. So we have our bowl. We're going to add our watermelon, our jicama, jalapeno, chili powder cumin, onion, cilantro, mint, and lime juice. So now see that everything is chopped. We're, we're ready to go and we're about done with it. So I'm gonna add in our watermelon. Okay. Lots of juice here, so I'm gonna set this aside because that is um, just a mess waiting to happen. Okay, our watermelon. We're going to add in our onion. So we're using a fourth a cup of our chopped red onion. So jicama is actually it's a very mild taste. Um, it really doesn't have a whole lot of a flavor if you think about um like a potato or think about um trying to think of I had another example but I can't can't think of right now. Um but it's very mild. There's not there's not a whole lot of flavor to it. That's why I was saying you can put in other spices and it will be um complimentary. So it doesn't have a whole lot of its own flavor. So it pairs pairs well with other um, flavorful spices and herbs. And it is crunchy, yes. Okay, so we've got one fourth cup onion here. I'm gonna add in my jicama and my jalapeno. Y'all, this jalapeno is a spicy one. Okay. <laughs> so if you want to, definitely you can start with half, just depending on your jalapeno. I do like a little spice, so I think I'll be all right. But I am definitely not going to be touching my contact lenses for a little while. <laughs> okay, so we've got our jicama, jalapeno, onion, watermelon, 
Um, we're going to add some of our cumin and we are doing just a fourth of a teaspoon of cumin. So cumin does have a stronger um, flavor. So it doesn't take a whole lot, just like chili powder. And running low. So we just put the rest of this in there. Yes, okay, a pear, yes. A pear is comparable, I feel like, to a jicama, although I feel like a pear is definitely a little sweeter. Um, we've got our chili powder. So we are just doing one teaspoon of our chili powder. And if you want to bump that down to half a teaspoon, um, can definitely do that too. So we can work with the ratios here so that it's not too spicy. Okay, so we've got our um, chili powder added. Next, we have some lime juice. So we're going to do um, about two tablespoons of lime juice. So I'll probably just squeeze this whole lime on there. We'll see. I don't think there's a whole lot of juice in this one but it could be wrong. So I'm just gonna squeeze my lime. So if you're measuring two tablespoons, I love lime, so I feel like there's there doesn't, <laughs> there don't, really couldn't be too much. Yeah, and if you wanted to add maybe those small sweet peppers, um that are not spicy you could definitely do that and um, if you know what i'm talking about they're like the yellow red um they're just the ones that are small um, you could add those you could add some bell peppers if you wanted i feel like bell peppers have more of a flavor profile so it might take away from the salad but or the, sa the salsa <laughs> just depends on what you want to add so i'm going to give this a quick mix We are almost done, guys. Give us a quick mix. And then last but not least, we will add our um, mint and our cilantro. So we'll just try to chop that up. Oh, this smells really good. It smells sweet. Also, it smells a little spicy. But it's with the cumin, it's really, um, if you're familiar with cumin, it's more of like a smoky kind of flavor or smell. So if you can imagine like a little smoky, spicy sweet aroma that's that's what i've got going on over here <laughs> okay and we'll have the mint you could eat that entire bowl <laughs> yeah it does very refreshing especially for a hot day okay so what i'm gonna do we can either mix in we can mix in our cilantro and our mint um, I guess we'll we'll just go ahead and do that. We'll mix it in. Um, I'm gonna just we just tear it, or we can do some our herb shears. Okay, we'll use our our herb shears because these are easy. So. We are just finishing up. Get a few of these mint leaves in here. And we are using, so about a fourth a cup, um, or you can do less for that, this for the cilantro. And for the mint, we're just doing um, three tablespoons. So I'm just gonna try to get, just eyeball it. And give this a mix and then we'll add our cilantro and we'll add it back to our watermelon bowl so this one is a fourth a cup so we are adding more here and i i personally love cilantro so i'm just like yep let's just chop it up and put it in there mint i feel like for me personally is something that i, I have to 
be in the mood for or like it has to sound really good in a recipe um which it sounds really good in this recipe so that's why I chose it <laughs> but um I, I do love love cilantro but we've got both of the herbs in here giving us um, good antioxidants and really that natural flavor from the herbs is what we like because we don't have we're not adding any salt or any any no pepper that sounds weird um we're not adding any salt or anything and that is it good to go so i'm just going to add it back to our um watermelon bowl here push everything in everything is nice and mixed up I make sure everything is nice and cool. We're following it. Okay. So as you can see, we still have some. I'll just top this off. Perfect. Let's set this aside. And then we have our chips. I'll move everything so y'all can see a pretty presentation of it. All right. So we have that and we can serve it with chips. If you wanted to maybe put it on, you know, a board or, I mean, this could be at like a really good center of a charcuterie board because you'll even imagine it would be so pretty. Um, but we'll just put our chips around. And once we get our chips on there, I'll show you all. So instead you could put the watermelon bowl inside that larger bowl, partially filled with ice to keep it cold. That is great. That's a great idea. Who could resist? <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna put some chips around it and then I'm gonna show y'all the final, final, final product here. Oh, this looks even better now. <laughs> okay. Thank y'all for joining me today. I know we're a little over. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Look at this. That is beautiful. I, I'm, I'm actually kind of obsessed with this. <laughs> I'm going to go to the pool now, guys. I'm going to take this and uh, just go make some friends. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's class. And we look forward to seeing you in the next one.